Hey guys, in this tutorial, we are going through the process of create API serve with ComfyUI and you are able to communicate using the API interface with other applications or other AI models that you can generate image or videos through other applications. It is, uh, well, uh, cannot be say easy, but it is kind of simple process to enable these features but then it require a little programming basic skills that you need in order to do something with this. So by starting from here, we have to go to the Comfy UI Manager. Now you must install Comfy UI Manager in order to do this. And you click this gear icon. On the top here, you will see this setting menu. Now you have to enable this enable developer mode options. So once you enable this developer mode options, close this button, you will see this save API format. Now, whenever you create something on this workflow diagrams, it will allow you to save as API format. So allow the Comfy UI to run this workflow from the back end of the Comfy UI server. Now, as everyone should know about this, when you start the Comfy UI, you load up this command prompts, bat files that is running all the things starting from your computer, loading up all the custom notes that you install and other files that it has in here. Now in the last thing in here is set starting server. So basically Comfy UI is act as a web server for you to use everything on here. That's why the Comfy UI are opening the web interface through this local host link and you are able to access the Comfy UI interface through your web browsers. So what we have right now is that we will connect this and we are going to use, well by default they have this Comfy UI script example here. Now everyone should have these two files when you download the Comfy UI project in GitHub and you can access this subfolders Comfy UI script examples. You get this basic API examples and the WebSocket API examples. Now what I'm going to do is that I will use the WebSocket API examples as the demonstrations here. So this is the one that without any editing, but right now we have to do some editing. Of course, to fit into what we need to run this API, clients act as a client to communicate with our Comfy UI web server. So although this is running in one machine, but you can bring this Python code to other client apps or client machines that you can communicate through the server address or have something to other applications from remote to connect with the Comfy UI server here. So by starting that, I will be doing a very basic text to image prompting here first. So by loading the default, you have a text to image. So what I'm going to do, I will be choosing my Juggernaut SD 1.5 models. And here we have the negative and positive text prompt. And what I will do is that I will leave this empty. But then one thing we have to remember, we have to remember is all these custom notes. You have to set the unique titles for all the notes here. Basically, that will be easier for you to manage later on in the coding areas in here than without guessing all these numbers and data in the JSON files. So what I'm going to do in here, because for example, like this one, the clip text in code of positive and negative prom is the same title. So I have to change that as well. So later on, I don't have to be guessing all the stuff. So clip text in code, I would just say clip text prom positive. Okay. I would just do a short form, say pose here. And then right in the negative prom, I would just do clip text prom negative here. So nug represent negative and then positive. And if you have 2K sampler, then you will be having a label for different sampler as well. For example, you have one groups for the first group, K sampler for generate image, and then another groups of K sampler to enhance more detail of the image. Then you will have to do, for example, in here, I would say K sampler one, right? And here we have the K sampler two. Then you will be knowing that it is different sampler that is running in the same workflow. Okay, but for just right now, demo purpose, we don't need too much sampler right now. We just need checkpoint models loading the text to generate image. That's it. And later on, we might do our videos to videos or image to image or image to videos or even stable videos diffusions. Run everything as a workflow pipeline and automate the whole process of running the videos generations in there as well. So let's save this one. So remember, when you save the workflow for API call and you have to click on this button instead of the save button. Now the save button, they are both save JSON files as well. 
but the format for API are different. So what I'm going to do, I will save this workflow underscore API JSON files, and I'm going to save in our project folders for this tutorial at this moment. Okay, so this part is done, but leave the comfy UI on, do not close that. Then we are going to the VS Code. Now you can use other text editor if you prefer, but for me, I just like to use Visual Studio because I use that for a long time. And right now, the VS Code is just more flexible for code editing. So right here, we have to check first of all the server address. Now we have to see if we got the same server address in here. So in here, they said now the comfy server set the 127 point and then the port number 8188. So check back again in here. We see, okay, we got the same values on here. So no problems for that. Now in here, they are start to creating clients, IDs, and then requesting the server address. That's fine. Again, this template, this coding, you don't have to create from scratch. You have the example in here already. So you can copy one of these files and bring it to other folders location and start editing your own copy of API clients for your project. So in here we can see get image and then prompts ID, blah, blah, blah. You can go to this part as well. Now in here we have to change this part for our workflow. This is a predefined simple workflow JSON format that is hard coding in here. As you see, it's a prompt text and then it hard code. The whole JSON files actually is writing into here, but we don't need this because we have our JSON files for workflow already, right? So we delete that. And also we don't need that because we are going to load the JSON files. I have to do a little coding on this part. Okay. And then as you can see in here, we can locate the notes, numbers, and input and text. And then we can do the text prompt like this. So in our examples, we have positive and negative prompts. So in here, later on, we can set our prompts. This is for positive and maybe another one is for negative. So say low quality, extra hands, extra legs, something like that. Okay, this is for the negative prompt. Then the seat numbers. We can set that as well. Just any values in our workflow. In Comfy UI, we can set this as well but you have to set the correct one because it doesn't do any error corrections or checking on the interface like Comfy UI here. So we have to make sure you have set the right values in order to run this. Otherwise, you will get an error message. So let me do the coding in here first. So in here, I have add the one little features to open up the workflow API JSON files, which we just saved from the Comfy UI, this one. So let's bring it to here. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, so we got this workflow API JSON files. Then we have another line for reading this JSON files. So we define this JSON workflow JSON data and then equals to f.read. So what is the fs is here we have defined these values for open up the files of this JSON text files here. Then lastly, we have defined another IO values in here. I call this the JSON WF. So just for JSON workflow shortened names, and then I put the JSON load. So using the default Python JSON functions to load this workflow data into these variables. Then after that, we don't need this one because this is for the, by default, we just delete that text prompt, the hard coding, all the JSON format in there. So starting in here, we can edit our values in each custom notes. So for example, we got this positive text prompt and negative text prompt. So let's find this one. Where can we find in our text prompts here that we can minimize our error? So score it down. As you can see now, it's way easier to see the custom notes locations and all the saved data in here when you have the title you need. Imagine if you did not change the titles you need. You got everything is clip text. Then you will have to guessing which one by whom just by seeing this JSON files. So in here, we can see this is the text prompt for positive. Then this is the ED6, right? So as we are using the positive prompt six, and then we do the input. So where is the input? Is that is inherit the ED6, custom notes the input, and then the text is inherit under the input space here. So we got the text correct and everything is correct for this one. So this is a pass. Okay, so next one, we got to do negative prompt. So where's the location for negative prompt? Let's scroll down. We'll see this negative prompt right here and it belongs to ID seven. 
So in ID7, we have to change this JSON WF ID7. And then again, the input text, it is the same as the positive text prompt. We do this in here. So let's say we can also include in this one, say that it's no text, watermark, and nestoirs. So we are all good to go for positive and negative prompts. Now set the seat numbers for case sampler nodes. Again, we can go find where's the case sampler. So for the fast way, I can do a search on here. Just control F and you can search the case sampler names. And there you go. You have the case samplers in here that is inherited in ID3, right? So ID3 input. So seat numbers right here. So I like to use not a hard code values in here. Instead, I will put seat numbers. Let's say a seat number. Okay. I call this the seat number, and I will do like uh, 777. This is for my default seat numbers. And then, okay, this is not a C sharp. So we don't need this semicolon. That's all I need. I got a bad habit, not bad. I mean, the old habit of getting all this semicolon or like this in just like the C sharp styles. But in Python, we don't need that. So that's all we need for here. And then lastly, we add the seat number variables into here. So the JSON workflow in case samplers, note the seat numbers are equals to this seat numbers. So there you go. And lastly, we need to go through all these processing and generate the result, right? We need to return the result in order to let us to have something to see in front of us whether you are doing an image or videos. So let's change the last part in here. So we got this template for output and showing the image. But then I want to save the image to somewhere else, maybe in the files folders, maybe we can show it on the web browsers, anything. So we got to do that. Okay, so lastly, we got to do is save our image, the generate image into our app or this software in the same folder here. So that will be here in this line, the image save. And then I put the file's name. I would do like the format is output, the seat numbers, and also including the notes ID, which will be very unique files name for this PNG files, because we will get this notes ID in each four loops. Okay, so here we got the for loops and we will have the image data in this notes ID. So that will be the if you have one image. So it will go through this for loop for one time. If you have generate for image in here, then you will have for loop in here to save four times of the image individually. So in here we got from PIL import image. So this is the image files type. And then we have to import IO. So IO is like commonly in many programming language. This is for files input and output library. Then we are going to have the image loading up the IO data from the image data here. So put that data into this image variable. And lastly, we will save this image into the same folder in here. But then we don't need image show in here because we have the files already. So this is by default we have in this template in ComfyUI. Again, you can download this or not download. I mean, you will have this eventually if you download the ComfyUI. So it's right here. So let's go back to our code here. So save this Python and we can test this. That is a very easy, simple workflow that we do. Let's check one more time again and see if there's anything. Now, the next thing is we have to install and enable the WebSocket in our Comfy UI project. So by doing that, we will go to Windows Command Prompt and starting into here, we will go to our Comfy UI dependence embed area. So right here, let's go to CD. My path in Comfy UI mostly, we are all installing the Comfy UI portable versions. So it will have this Python embedded files beside your Comfy UI. So it will be something looks like this. So it will be something looks like this. And you have the Comfy UI portable files. And then inside this one, you got the Comfy UI. And then you got the Python embed here. So what we got to do is we got to install the WebSocket in using the Python embed dependence files. Here we got to use this Python exe to execute everything. So going back to here, we have this one. So we have the Python embed location already. So we got to do is using that Python exe files and do executions for installations. We get the pipe and install and the package is WebSocket client. So this is the thing that we need to install in here. 
So press enter, it will be installing very fast. This is just a very little script to install. So once we got that, then we can move on into the next step. Right now we come to the code project folders that we just added in versus code. So in here, I have the locations of the web shocks and the workflow API JSON. So in here, what I'm going to do, I will type the CMD enable command prompts in this path. Then I'm going to use the Python exe to execute because here I have just installed a WebSocket client library in my comfy UI Python embedded independence library here. So just copy this line and just paste it on here. So after the exe, we have this WebSocket API examples pi. So this is this file's name. So let's run this and see. Okay, so after finishing running, you see here we got our image. So if you want to have something showing up, popping up in front of you without a notice, anything is running, finish running, then you can do something in here which show you the image. I know some people want that and some people don't like it. That is up to you. But for me, I can just skip that part and just have my files saved in here. But let's run one more time because I just enabled the show, the show functions, and it will show up the functions of our image here. Right? And one thing you can do is, okay, so in my example here, what I can do is I can put a random seed numbers in here. So every time I execute this command prompts, it will generate other image for me instead of having the same image here. So let me do this part and I will generate a random seat numbers here. So I have did random numbers for here. That is not going to be a hard code, same seat number every time. So you will have other image generates when you execute it in our prompts here. So let's try it again and you will see what I talking about. And also, I will show up this one and this one. It should be really clear for you to understand what happens right here. So on the top here, this command prompt is the server of Comfy UI. As usual, we always run this when we are using the web interface in Comfy, and that is the same one. And the second one in lower part here is the one that we doing the executions of our scripts of this files, the WebSocket API scripts. So this act as a client app, you can put this in other locations or other device. Maybe you have other laptops that you want to remotely run stuff in your main computer server. You can do that as well. So what we got to do is we executing this again, the same path. Okay, comfy API tutorial one, and then the code is the folders in here. And I'm going to execute this one more time. And again, I'm using the Python, the set of Python, that installed within the comfy UI folders to run this. So just click, just press enter, and you're able to run this. Oh, actually I have frozen this one. Oh yeah, forgot about this. The seat number random integer needs two set of arguments. So A and B like between one to 100 or one to 2000, like a set of a range for that. And we have to go back to here and set it up. So let's say zero, say one to nine, nine. And then there we go. Let's do that again. Yes, it works. So there you go. It show up on the client side. It will pops up this image and we will have also the loading log in our server side command prompt. Windows as well. And also it won't show anything on the client side on here because it's just a command prompt to execute this Python script. So what you will have is in your folder, you will have this. So in here, it is also following our file name structures that I did the seat numbers. So the seat numbers always random right now. And then the nine is our note ID. So the note ID for safe image is or preview image is ID nine. Uh, let's go search that. We can do that in here. Yes, we can see the nine is right here. That is the save image notes. So in theory, we will also have this image save that in the surfer side, which we will have that in the comfy UI output folder as well. Yes, we got this in the output folder. These two files is saved by default in comfy UI as well. 
And also we have saved one copy in the client side script or the client side application as well. So there you have it. This is kind of advanced stuff using Comfy UI and you need some programming basic foundation skills in order to play around with this. So yeah, feel free to ask if you don't understand anything in here. We can go step by step. If you think this is too complex, then just go back. Use the confuse that is comfortable for you, then that's fine. But then I want to build a workflow that automate everything without me to open this web UI of Comfy. And I can just execute one command prompts in Windows. And then I can automate the whole entire videos, animations, creation process in here. So this is my automate goal of creating this. So step by step, First, we will do this WebSocket API call, and then next one, we will try to integrate with more valuables, more values, or the input image in here, or input videos to videos in here. Then eventually, we will set up the whole process in here. And once it's done, we can use a large language model to act as an AI agent to control this script as well, to execute this API script to automate everything for us. So I hope this inspire you to run comfy UI and AI application, not just using normally in here. Instead, we can automate things like really automate this whole AH software as our workflow pipeline. So hope this inspire you and I will see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. Bye.